Hello and welcome to this YouTube presentation on the Information Technology Architect Grade 1, also known as a Logical Database Designer. My name is Charles Richter and I'm the Principal Consultant for Repose PTY Limited. In my introduction to the Information Architect, I mentioned that I'd be delivering this presentation on the responsibilities of the fifth category or class of the Information Architect. In this presentation, I'll describe the responsibilities, inputs, processes, output skills, and an example of deliverable of the Information Technology Architect Grade 1 or the Logical Database Designer. I appreciate that the grading of architects may be somewhat confusing, but use a medical analogy, you would not expect a general practitioner to carry out an operation involving open heart surgery. Hence, it is important to know what information architect is needed to carry out what task. So what is an Information Technology Architect Grade 1? As I could not find a reference to the words anywhere on the net, I decided to start my search by using the words Logical Database Designer in a Google search and found the following Wikipedia reference which referred to the action of designing a logical data model rather than what a logical database designer is or ought to be. Still, that is better than nothing. So, a logical data model is, quote, principally the, and most correctly, it can be thought of as the logical design of the base data structures used to store the data, unquote. This is still not clear. Does it mean that the logical database design is responsible for the design of the logical database? If so, what are the skills, inputs, processes and outputs of the logical database designer? As I see the Information Technology Architect Grade 1 and the Logical Database Designer as one and the same concept, I will state that the Information Technology Architect Grade 1, or Logical Database Designer, is responsible for rationalizing all the attributes in the conceptual knowledge model and converting the conceptual model into a logical database design. In Repose Speak, this is the skill of the Repose Grade 5, or RA5. In the case where there is no con corporate information model, the logical database designer will need to fall back on other techniques. More on these later. So what are the inputs, processes and outputs of the Repose Architect Grade 5? Ideally, the input a logical database designer needs is the knowledge model produced by the Repose Architect Grade 2, the prioritized systems model produced by the Repose Architect Grade 3, and the attributes uncovered by the Repose Architect Grade 4. The process of the logical database designer needs will be discussed in the next five slides, but the outputs are the logical database design, which is then used as input for both the logical subject area architect, or the information technology architect grade 2, and the database administrator, or the information technology architect grade 5. As I mentioned in the previous slide, I'll now provide you with four techniques whereby an Information Technology Architect Grade 1 can develop the logical database. They will all require the attributes catalogued by the Business Information Technology Architect or the Data Modeler or the Repose Architect Grade 4. The first approach will use the data flow technique to create the data stores. The second approach uses a technique called normalization. The third approach will use a technique called set theory. And the fourth uses a technique called rationalization or natural selection. Note, the rationalization approach is the technique used by the Repose Architect Grade 5. The differentiation between each technique is the amount of time the practitioner requires to design the logical database. As I mentioned in the previous slide, the first method that can be used by a logical database designer is data flow diagrams and to create data stores. I cover data flows in the presentation on the Repose Architect Grade 4 so I will assume you understand this concept. If not, please see the YouTube presentation on the data modeler. So what is a data store? According to Wikipedia reference, a data store, also known as a database, is, quote, a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed, and updated, unquote. My apologies for the almost illegible diagram, but the image on the Wikipedia's reference was not a clear copy. However, you can look at the original by searching the net for data stores and follow the Wikipedia reference. The problem with this technique is that it requires all the data flows or transactions to be known before attempting to identify the data stores. As data flows in and out of the processes, the data can be collected in data stores or parameters and passed on and used as input to other processes and output by the same process. 
This is, a, this is clearly an approach with many traps and therefore should be accompanied by a warning notice. The second technique a logical database designer can use is called normalization, which according to a Google search reference is a systematic way of ensuring that a database structure is suitable for general purpose querying and free of certain undesirable characteristics, insertion, update and deletion anomalies. We now know this as first normal form, developed in 1970. Codd went on to define the second and third normal forms in 1971, and Codd and Raymond F. Boyce defined the boyce codd normal form in 1974. High normal forms were defined by other theorists in subsequent years, the most recent being the sixth normal form introduced by Chris Date, Hugh Darwin and Nikos Lorizentos in 2002. The major problem with the normalization technique is that it requires the database designer to make a decision as to whether a fact which exists in reality, for example date of birth, exists based on an arbitrarily created or fictitious attribute called a primary key attribute, for example the person identifier, which will uniquely identify the existence of a single occurrence of an instance of a person. The decision of attributing the existence of a real-life attribute to the existence of an imaginary or created attribute basically leaves a determination up to the speculative powers of the logical database designer, which can give rise to several designs, and hence nullifies the validity of normalization. So it does not matter how many forms of normalization there are, all forms may be incorrect. Again, this technique should be accompanied by a warning notice. The third technique a logical database designer can use is called set theory. According to a Wikipedia reference, set theory is, quote, the branch of mathematics that studies sets which are collections of objects. Although any type of object can be collected into a set, set theory is applied most often to objects that are relevant to mathematics. The modern study of set theory was initiated by Cantor and Dedekind in the 1870s, unquote. Set theory is often taught in high schools and in a first year university course. However, I will not try to teach you how to use this approach as it takes about four weeks to get to know it. Suffice it to say, there is a similarity between set theory and normalization which can be summed up as follows. The element is analogous to an attribute. The universal set is analogous to the catalog of all the discovered attributes. A set is analogous to a data store. A union is analogous to unnormalized data. And an intersection is analogous to normalized data. Hence, should the logical database designer use this technique to design a database, they will experience the same difficulties using the normalization technique. The fourth approach, called rationalization or natural selection, will use the conceptual knowledge model developed by the Repose Architect Grade 2 and the prioritized systems developed by the Repose Architect Grade 3 and the attributes populated entities as uncovered by the Repose Architect Grade 4. The Repose Architect Grade 5 has merely to decide if an entity is to remain logical or become a physical table. If the table is to remain logical and there are any attributes in it, these attributes will have to migrate to the nearest associated physical entity. In Example 1, the logical database designer decides to leave the birth certificate entity as logical, and as the attribute date of birth belongs to the birth certificate entity, and because there is a natural relationship through the associated link of the person foreign key, the date of birth attribute will migrate to the person table if and only if the person table is also physical. Example 2 shows that if the birth certificate table is considered to be physical, then the date of birth attribute remains in the birth certificate table. Now the software tool that I developed called CASPER, Computer Assisted Strategic Planning and Reasoning, has a module that automates this procedure. Due to the 10 minute restriction of YouTube, I've had to break this presentation into two. Please see the deliverable presentation for the deliverables and closing. Thank you for viewing so far.